welcome to Net Zero Carbon, and and today we're looking at corporate climate targets, specifically uh, net zero targets and uh, uh, science-based targets. What's the difference between the two? What are the advantages and disadvantages of both, and how they complement each other? And today, I, I, I'm I'm glad to say we have our expert on this, uh, Nick. Welcome to you. Uh, uh, how would you explain the difference to those who are interested? Thanks, Jeremy. Um, so. A net zero target is, uh, can be defined as a, a date that you set uh, by which your emissions uh, have reached net zero. Um, net zero targets are in wide use by, uh, by companies, by local governments, uh, by entire economies. Uh, you know, the, 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 one of the main stories from the past year is that the UK became the first major economy to set a, uh, an economy-wide net zero target for 2050. And uh, that's, that's really brought uh, net zero targets uh, more into, the, in, into mainstream discussion. Um, a science-based target is another kind of corporate climate target. Uh, they've been around uh, since 2015, since the Paris Agreement was signed. So net, uh, science-based targets uh, are enshrined in the Paris Agreement. Uh, now, the Paris Agreement, uh, the ultimate aim of it is to limit global warming uh, to two degrees or ideally one and a half degrees. So a science-based target uh, can be defined as any action by a company that uh, is compatible with a world that only warms to one and a half or two degrees. Um, yeah. And so uh, in, in terms of the difference between the two, there are as I understand it, there are, there are differences on in, in the amount of work required and uh, getting this verified by others. Uh, is it a more onerous thing, a science-based target, and, and what does it mean for people who are considering it? It's uh, this is a it's a good question. Now, there is uh, there is nothing necessarily about a net zero target that should make it any less onerous than a science-based target. The key point of comparison is that uh, science-based targets uh, have to be externally validated. They are independently validate, validated by the Science-Based Targets Initiative. And the Science-Based Targets Initiative uh, publishes uh, validation criteria for companies that are submitting their proposals for science-based targets, which uh, have to be met in order for that target to be assigned either uh, a 1.5 degree level of ambition or a well below two degree level of ambition. So it's this, uh, it's this external uh, verification process that science-based targets go through uh, that makes them uh, very stringent. When you announce that you're going to set a science-based target, you actually have up to two years uh, to develop that target before you need to submit it for validation. Now in contrast, net zero targets are entirely conceptual. Any organization and indeed any country can declare a certain uh, net zero target, and in doing so, uh, you know, be rewarded with with reputational uh, benefits. Um, uh, you, they they get to 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 to, to state their, their their ambition in climate in in their own um, plans for climate change. But there isn't any body that externally passes any form of judgment on that net zero target. So. Uh, one one thing that we see frequently uh, with companies that only choose to, to to assign a net zero target is that they they're free to define a scope for that target that can exclude actually significant emissions. And without going into too much detail, um, lots of indirect emissions uh, can be excluded from these net zero targets that actually uh, uh, account for a majority of corporate emissions. Um, and if you're going through the process of setting something like a science-based target, the nature of it forces you to consider uh, all of your corporate emissions. And if your indirect emissions uh, account for a certain amount of your total emissions, you need to take them into account in the science-based target. And there isn't any party to force you to do that with a net zero target the way that there is for a science-based one. 
So in a sense, it's, it's particularly interesting for companies and other organizations that, if you like, want to hold themselves to a, uh, to a higher and more rigorous standard. Uh, whether or not it's required at the moment, it's the sort of thing that in institutional investors and others are increasingly taking an interest in, aren't they? Uh, and uh, you mentioned the detail on this. Uh, if, if people want more information, I, I think you've written your own paper, is that right, for, for this website? That's right. So uh, one of the pieces on netzerocarbon.com is a guide and insight piece that talks about corporate climate targets fairly broadly. It goes into all the detail that I've just gone into on net zero targets and science-based targets and a lot more. So we really hope that you pick up that piece because uh, it should be uh, everything that you need to know about one of the very first and most essential steps that a business should take uh, when it's considering its own decarbonization. Well, that's really useful. And Nick, if there's one more message to, to someone listening ab about this, because I, I, I think from what I, from what I heard from you and, and what, what others on the team have said, it, it's not about saying one, one approach is better than another. They're complementary. They're both important. Um, but if you were choosing or deciding what's the best approach for you as a company now, what would your recommendation be? Dive into the detail or take a broader view? What would you do first? Um, I think we should stress that net zero targets and, and science-based targets are not mutually exclusive. They can complement each other really well. I think the strength in a net zero target is that it expresses a high level ambition and it's a flagship kind of proposal for uh, a company's um, uh, climate ambitions. Uh, it sets a, a, a long-term destination for that uh, company's emissions. A science-based target, on the other hand, is intended to be a short to medium term ambition. They have to be refreshed every five years. Um, so we would only encourage companies to, to take both up because they play together uh, really well. Well, that's extremely useful. And I think, you know, it can be bewildering sometimes, some of the terminology here, but I think uh, at least when it comes to science-based targets and the diff distinction between that and, and, and net zero carbon, uh, you, you've helped to, to illuminate it and provide uh, uh, so, some more information, which I'm sure will be useful. Well, do visit us again soon, either on this or related topics, and we'll be happy to keep you uh, well informed uh, about how carbon reporting and other matters develop in the years and months ahead. Thank you.